Hi and welcome to Watch the Time and my review of the Tudor Black Pay 58. I've had it for a few weeks now and um, it's had a lot of risk time. Uh, I have to say a lot of risk time. And uh, I just wanted to give you my thoughts on the watch now. The, the honeymoon, that initial honeymoon period is over. Uh, we're back in lockdown in the UK, uh, full lockdown. So I thought this was a good time to do uh, an updated review. So I'll just whip it off the wrist and uh, we'll take you around it. So the Black Bay 58, uh, it had a lot of uh, press and there was a lot of furore about it. And, uh, you know, I, I was fairly late to the party. You couldn't get hold of it. When I originally went to look at this watch, it was not available and you had to put your name on a waiting list and I wasn't prepared to do that. And um, so I just waited and waited and waited. It happened upon, uh, whilst the, during the last sort of semi-lockdown, um, I just happened to look in the watch window, at the, the jeweller's window, and there was one in the window. And I was actually looking at the time at the, the Tudor GMT. And uh, I noticed they had this, tried it on. Uh, it was a toss-up between this and the GMT, but I decided to go for this, as the, uh, the GMT is, is more readily available. And I knew that if I didn't get this, uh, I probably would have lost my opportunity. And I'm really glad I did, because I absolutely love it. And I, I've written down some reasons why and I'll just go through them very quickly and that's uh, legibility that it's the most legible watch I've ever owned bar none the only thing that comes close is something like a Timex Indiglo because it's so legible at night but this is so legible at night because the loom plots are so good you know the the, the big uh, hour hand uh, the, the long fairly wide minute hand the big markers even the, the big square or the snowflake i don't know why they're called snowflakes um on the second hand you know is is really visible you know sort of three four o'clock in the morning this this really is all night visibility loom wise absolutely fantastic i love the reflections you get from the, the gilt uh don't know if i can do it here but now and again you'll 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 see a reflection and all you'll see is the gilt you, you don't see anything else it's a weird i can't get it here indoors um uh, but yeah, you look down at it and you, you just see the gilt reflecting like an outline of all the hands and the markers. It looks fantastic. Wearability because of the size, because it's lovely and slender. Uh, 39mm case, 47 lug to lug. I think it's about 12mm thick. Uh, you know, it's a, a fantastic size watch. The bezel action is absolutely lovely. Um, it feels nice. It sounds nice. Um, it, everything lines up it's got an extra bit of a detent there so it locks in nicely uh, accuracy wise <laughs> this is uh, it's fantastic it's obviously a cosc certified watch uh, but this one is coming in at I, i've worked it out i can only do it across so many days because it's so accurate um, i got it to be about one uh, four seconds in 11 days so it's kind of around a quarter of a second fast uh, which is fantastic it's pretty close to quartz accuracy if i'm being honest uh, another thing i like which i didn't really notice a lot of people talk about the gold markers on the bezel well they're actually pink um, if you look at the 10 there it's got a slightly pink hue to it in this light it's difficult to see but now and again outside normally you you get that sort of look of the the pink markers and i think that's a, a nice little touch it has a kind of uh, an almost like a femininity about it and i can see why because of the size um i can see why uh, uh, women uh, wear this i was talking to the the lady in the uh, the watch shop where i bought it and she'd bought one and she was wearing a, a fairly large tag at the time, but she bought one of these. Uh, and I think it appeals to you know both men and women. Um, I'm just going to talk about the bracelet because I've got an issue with the bracelet. And uh, some people have this issue, some people don't. I do. So these are this is half the bracelet, and there's a reason why I'm only showing you half of it at the moment. Um, firstly, the rivets don't bother me at all. And when you actually wear the watch, you don't see the rivets, so that doesn't bother me. What did bother me was it was either too loose or too tight for me. Um, with the uh, micro adjust, there were only three three holes of micro adjust, so um, it, it's not sufficient to cover the distance between the so the distance between there and there is greater than there and there on the pins. So you cannot 
you you might be lucky and get it absolutely fine and you'll be able to get a good fit but I've either got it set so it, it's 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 ever so slightly too tight but wearable when I'm cold and as soon as I warm up it's too tight or it's ridiculously loose we're talking bracelet loose there, there's no in between so my option with the bracelet is to wear it ever so slightly too tight and I had a few occasions when I had to keep releasing it because it was just too tight on the wrist so and the reason why this has happened as you can see there's three micro adjusts there well I was looking at the micro adjust on some of my other watches and there's a hole there's there's room for another hole there so my plan is I'm going to drill I'm going to drill another micro adjust hole in between there and the end now obviously drilling a 0.8 millimeter hole through polished stainless steel is tricky it's not particularly thick um, but it's um, it's certainly not going to be easy so I've bought all the stuff to do it uh, I'm, and I've wrapped it ready to to drill um, it's just plucking up the courage to make that first um, sort of <laughs> attempt at drilling worst case scenario is I will fail and I'll have a, you know maybe a small mark on the clasp here because if, if, I, if it doesn't feel like it's going right I'll just stop and um, I was going to take it to a jeweler's, but you can't do that at the moment because we're in lockdown. So, you know, everything becomes more difficult. So I'm going to give it a go myself and uh, see how we get on. But if I can get an extra hole in there, that will mean that I can I can actually wear it on the bracelet, and uh, that will be great. I only need I only need sort of a millimeter and a half. Um, so I'm going to go bang in between the end of the the uh, clasp and the the first hole and hopefully see how it goes but um, once I've done that I will do an update video as to how successful or not I have been so in the meantime I bought a, a really nice leather strap from watch gecko this is a really good quality thick Italian handmade um, watch strap it's the most I've ever spent on a on a watch strap I've actually spent more on this strap than I've spent on watches in the past it was um, you know I don't think horrendously expensive but 40 pounds for a leather strap I you know is it seems expensive to me it was really thick and uncomfortable to start with but it's starting to wear in now so it's starting to patina a little bit and conform to the shape of my wrist and it's getting more and more comfortable now and I'm really enjoying it on the leather strap I know it's a dive watch technically on a leather strap and that's uh, a faux pas but I don't care I think it looks really nice I think the stitching and the the uh, the color of the markers and the hands work perfectly together um, and I just enjoy wearing it on this and it's one of those watches you you wear and it disappears on wrist and for me you know two of the the, the most important things about watches and why uh, you know a lot of these watches are in my collection it's to do with wearability and legibility um, so I'll just show you a loom shot here as you can see the loom is is fantastic it's there's loads of it you know it lasts all night um, it, it's just brilliant at uh, any time it, it's it's just legible um, so I actually love it I love the light play um, I love everything about it really um, oh the other thing the crown um, let's just have a play with the crown one thing I do like as well is the writing there's the three lines of text if you look at the Pelagos I think there's five lines of text on it and it's just too much uh, so I, I quite like the fact it's only got three lines of text the crown is lovely it's it's oversized there's no crown guards it's a pleasure to use um, and when you undo it so we're gonna unscrew the crown there's a nice pop nice and definite just roll it forward and then you get the full pop um, and apparently that is uh, a common thing on these and uh, Rolex movements. It doesn't always do it, but nine times out of ten, once you've unscrewed it, just a little roll forward and you get that nice pop. And then you've got a lovely, a lovely winding. Not that you need to wind this once it's on your wrist, but, you know, just to get it going. And it screws in beautifully as well. It, everything feels uh, buttery smooth and quality um, it's just a pleasure to interact with that looks a lot more scratched than it actually is by the way that's just the light I've got at the moment it's really awkward because it's a, a grim dim overcast day so I'm using indoor lighting so there you have it the Tudor Black Bay 58 if someone said to me you could only have one watch out of your collection so 
there's my current collection. You could only have one watch. Which would it be? It would be this. And uh, you know that, that's a big statement. That's really difficult for me to say because I love, I love the Speedmaster. I love my Arnie. I love my Omega. I mean, if I was doing it with my head, I'd say the Omega. But my heart says the the Tudor. And the reason for that is the Omega's got a date. It's a quartz movement, so it's even more accurate. It's reliable. It's always going. You know, it's it's a fantastic watch. It's a three hundred meter water resistant watch, but you know this is a 200 meter water resistant watch it's deadly accurate it's um i mean these watches are synchronized um and you know after like about 10 days they're about five seconds apart you know it's it's fantastic and as, as an everyday watch you know you might even say well if you was only had one watch surely you know maybe a g-shock or, or the arnie because of the you know the, the extra functions that they give you but um you know to talking with my heart if i had to choose now and you and had to just keep one watch it would be this one um and I, i've never said that about any other watches that tells you a lot about it and it, the other thing is it's done is it's questioned why i've got uh, this many watches in my collection so there's the watch collection the entire back row apart from the knife is um looking like it's going to be sold for different reasons uh, and one of the reasons is because if you look at the front row uh, that's that's a, a, a lovely watch collection as it, as it stands so my plan is to sell the back row and keep the front row of watches so there we have it back on the wrist as you can see it fits beautifully on the wrist it's um i would say if, if you've got a really big wrist mine's uh, between seven and a quarter to seven and a half inches if you've got maybe an eight inch wrist you may want to go for the standard black bay the bigger one um it, if you like a smaller slender watch that's fine but oh, it is one of those you definitely need to try on i wouldn't want it to be much smaller than it is but um i really like it super comfortable and um it yeah it's just perfect for me so uh, thanks for watching my uh, updated review on the black bay 58 uh, like subscribe comment and uh, i'll see you for the next one which will be uh, possibly a little new g-shock i've got see you soon cheers bye